Hi, this is Dan with Engadget. We're going to take you on a very quick tour of the new iBooks author app that Apple released today. Up front, you've got six different templates that are going to look fairly familiar if you've ever seen an American style textbook. Certainly, I'm familiar with them just because, you know, you see them in uh, design magazines and stuff like that. So we're going to take you on a very quick tour. So let's select modern type just because uh, I happen to be uh, a bit of a fan. You go in, first thing you should really notice is the attention to detail. Even though it is just uh, an image that's layered beneath the text uh, setup, you can see there's little dents in the paper and actually everything's set up as a, a rough edge um, to make it look like there's texture there, to make it look more like a physical product rather than a digital one. It's a nice bit of attention to detail in the same way that a lot of um, Apple's apps have sort of uh, sort of faux leather texture and it's just nice because it gives you a sort of connection and hopefully you know the people who will use it will um, will respond to that so when you're uh, editing your textbook you'll notice that everything here is just very simple templates that are overlaid uh, on sort of image textures but it's just very easy for you to put the information in that you need. So oh, I've just spelled Engadget wrong. That's terrible. I'm fired now. Engadget. Hands on with Apple's iBooks author. Okay, we'll get the size down a bit. It's a bit too small. What do we say about size 18? It's a little bit too small, maybe size 36. There we are. And just because I can, I'm going to put my name on it. So, in on what would then be the second page, you've got the chance to put in some intro media. Just because I've got it here with me, there's a picture of me on the Grand Canyon. And it is as simple as that. I've just pulled it from my desktop, I've stuck it straight into the... Um, uh, into the window and that's it it's in now once you've um, poured through the cover this is the next thing that's going to come up and I'm looking very moody on there so next comes the table of contents this dynamically updates based on the material that you do in the rest of the book so if I just go to chapter one and change it from untitled to <clears throat> chapter the first if we go back to the contents it will actually show us that chapter the first has updated dynamically lastly on this sort of top section of the outline is a glossary any uh, complex words any foreign words that you might want to throw in a definition for all you've got to do is add a new one okay engage it and then just write a fantastic site on the on the interweb Okay, now what you can also do is have these things cross reference each other. So let's say I then wanted to do a definition for gadgets. Okay, I do gadgets and I type in um, toys, for instance. I go back to the Engadget definition and drag gadgets down here. Now those two again will dynamically cross reference with each other. It's kind of like building a very simple database and the tools here that um, Apple have provided make that very easy. So we're going to go into the first chapter and I'm actually going to show you just how to build out some text very quickly. Again one thing uh, we should draw attention to is that this number one here that's actually part of the um, picture texture beneath. You can't edit that and this is all pretty easy one thing uh, it's worth uh, sort of drawing drawing attention to is that this isn't the sort of thing that you're going to want to edit text in a lot it is quite fussy so we'll start with the first chapter and these subheadings will update so if we start with uh, okay, these dynamically update, but these quite annoyingly don't. So, this is the Laura Mipson header. I can change this now to say Dan's hands on, and this doesn't change. 
which is quite annoying because you would think of all of the things you'd be able to change that the other thing you can't do of course is change any of the text beneath you um you know you try and go through any of this placeholder text to just try a sub try and change a subheading it's not going to let you you have to delete everything and start from the beginning so as i said this is not going to be the sort of thing you are going to want to edit text in and there are plenty of other text editors out there i'm using pages there's open office there's word there's you know text edit you name it it's available this is just what i happen to have so this is the hands-on that i wrote and i'm just going to paste it in now <coughs> you can see it keeps the formatting which is pretty good obviously when you're using uh things like italic text anything that's hyperlinked having all that uh preserve the formatting is pretty handy if we go to page two you'll be able to see that you're actually able to dynamically alter uh, the layout of the text so you can have a one column set up you can have two columns you can have three columns what we'll do is we'll change it to two column because the other thing you can do is insert media you can insert things like quizzes you can insert tables and charts so if i wanted to throw in a quiz let's say for example my question was going to be what color is my background and so what do we think we've got four answers it's sort of gray greeny gray green beige yellow black you select the correct answer and then when someone comes to use this in their iPad they'll get this uh, multiple choice test pop up and they will have to select that to see whether they've been paying attention which again is pretty cool imagine having this when uh, when we were young enough to uh, go to school you know to be able to be tested as you go along in the textbook it just kind of makes you feel like you uh, you wouldn't have done so poorly on those pop quizzes when they came up it's not just uh, quizzes that you can stick in though it'll also operate around when it loads images and again it will shunt around this shouldn't be too much of a surprise for anyone who's familiar with using things like pages and open office this will shunt the text around your images and this is obviously a picture from our trailer at ces the other thing it can do is insert rich media if you go to widgets and insert media and you grab for example this copy of the engadget podcast that i had laying around you can just add a caption and when uh, someone gets to this point in the chapter if they wanted to they could just press play and then you probably can't hear it but it's now playing and of course when you're um, controlling it in the software itself you can actually preview everything that you've done using the widget now one of the things it's uh, important to draw attention to is that I pulled out uh, an mp4 file and a mov file that I was planning to drag in but for some reason <coughs> it doesn't seem to work well with mov or mp4 files which is a bit weird since um, both of those you would think given that this is an apple product would be baked in i'm not sure whether it that's you know part of the copyright protection or whether they're trying to keep the file size down but it just seems very weird that you wouldn't be able to pull video from you know from your desktop setup and be able to pl um, paste that straight in and something we're going to have um, an investigate on to see why exactly it's kicking it out now once you've done that once you've built up your textbook or in this case uh, my sort of hands-on if you've got an ipad to hand and i don't you can actually plug in an ipad and push it straight to the ibooks app to preview which is a pretty nifty feature because if you can't i suppose it's it's a good way of getting around um the app store controls you know if you've got 30 kids in the time you could probably just push the um software to their ipads and maybe some schools might actually do that and then of course there's just a one click publish button which will take everything that you've done package it up ready for you to upload it to the iBook store using um, iTunes producer which again I'm sorry to say we haven't got an iTunes producer account to hand when we do we'll be able to revisit this and 
go through it go through it in a bit more detail anyway um that's it i'm not sure we would recommend it for budding stephanie myers you know i don't think your particular twilight pastiche would uh, get too much attention from the app store reviewers who are going to be reviewing the textbooks but otherwise you know if you're if you're trying to produce educational materials on a budget this seems pretty simple and you know pretty much anyone can use it so we're quite excited by it this is uh, this is Dan from Engadine. <laughs>